So we're going to now go to Adi, um, who was covering uh, China for the Wall Street Journal um, and who had to leave Beijing uh, a few weeks after Dinda uh, to be there when his son was born. And I guess you left two, two days after martial law was declared? Or? His, his due date was June 4th, but he was born on May 23rd. So, thank God. Right, this is a panel of people who were not actually there. <laughs> <laughs> Eyewitness accounts, as read in the New York Times. Um, so, so yeah. So we were there. You know, I was, I was one of the first journalists who was covering you know this the, the, that first overnight student movement. I mean, I remember you know, every day of the week, and it's probably obscured to most of you. But you know, Huyo Bang guys, the students in Beijing come together. You know, to this day, it seems clear it was unplanned, it was spontaneous, but it was important. Uh, you know, they, they ended up at the Xinhua Gate outside where the party is, and you know, the later accounts of that when they were besieging the Xinhua Gate, and you know, the party described it as something very fraught, very dangerous. Uh, um, it was nothing of the kind, and what struck me, uh, you know, when I was there reporting was the discipline of the students. You know, you'll remember there was a moment when somebody threw paint on uh, the portrait of Mao um, at Tiananmen Square. It was students who, you know, captured the person and basically allowed for that person to be turned over to the police. I mean, there was, there was, you know, it wasn't 100 percent, and you, know, you have millions of people in the street. It's not like everything is orderly, but the the commitment of you know people like Wang Dan, student leaders to make this orderly, to not push beyond the, the demands, which are pretty limited, was, it was very interesting. And so, all this is interesting, not so much our memories, but the questions that come up now. So yesterday at Harvard, there was a, a June 4th commemoration uh, that I was at, Wang Gan was there, Hao Jian, an activist, and some others. And it was packed, there were probably 200 Chinese students, uh, you know, most students at Harvard or elsewhere in Boston. Just really dying to know, nobody wanted to leave, it was, it was, but the questions were, they weren't propagandists for the government, they were legitimately confused, asking questions, I mean, really what, what Dinda just alluded to, um, it was chaos, every, every government puts out chaos. And so the only perspective that I want to give to this is, the student movement initially was limited, uh, the demands were limited, and the government had an opportunity. As Wang Dan said yesterday, there was discontent. It was discontent on the universities before Hu Yabang died. It was going to come out somehow. It came out in this way, and students took to the street. It was going to come out, the government was going to have a moment when it would have to respond to that. And, you know, in my view, the government failed the test. The publication, it seems all weird to American ears, the publication of an official editorial in People's Daily on April 26th changed everything. And we can talk about the politics of that, the worst luck in the world, Zhao Ziyang had a pre-planned trip to North Korea, which he went ahead and did. His voice was not there. Explain what that editorial was. So the editorial basically branded the movement as you know, anti-patriotic, anti-party, anti-socialist, and, you know, again, that sounds like just words. In China then, I'd say more than today, but in China then, a People's Daily editorial is, you know, the law. And, you know, by the end of it, the students' demands were limited. They wanted dialogue over university affairs. They wanted the government to rescind the, uh, the branding of their movement as unpatriotic. Those two things, students, I believe, there's no way to know this, but I believe the students would have gone back to campus and bloodshed would have been averted. You know, the student movement was also for reform. This picks up on what David says. It was anti-corruption. It was people were frustrated by the slowing of, of reform, the replacing of Hu Yaobang. You know, in my mind, the government had, had found the ability to co-opt the movement, to, you know, to, to, to find a way to meet those two fairly moderate demands. For a you know, distance, we could say that. Um, you would have had an accelerated reform. China would have taken off sooner, possibly with, with less corruption than it had. But the logic, the Hu Chiaomu logic, if we give an inch, all is lost, really, and the sense of face. You know, Li Peng came out publicly and made it clear that Deng Xiaoping had decided that we had to take a tough stance against the students. That pissed off Deng. I mean, this is all in Jiang Ziyang's memoirs. That pissed off Deng. His face is on the line, and so sort of these kind of rational solutions were, were sort of off the table. But, um, you know, the movement, 
as Dennis said, it was peaceful, it was, it was idealistic, it was patriotic, and the bloodshed, in my mind, was unnecessary.